It is an honour and a privilege to welcome Mr. Jeremy McKinnon to Mosh Talks. Mate, it is rare that I look forward to a chat so much. How's life? It's been good, man. How you been? Yeah, good, man. Good. Really, really been looking forward to this because I don't think we like I think we only spoke briefly at the start of the bad vibration cycle. So it's been quite a while. It and has been. And there's always a lot going on in your world. So I'm going to dive straight in with something that's very near and dear to both of our hearts. And that's the ghost inside. Mate, oh, yeah. I think that record was criminally overlooked. Um, Man. What was it like to be part of that? Because it, there was so much emotion in it from outside and in. So what was that like as an experience, man? Uh, I was I was grateful to be a part of it. It was um, it was something I took really serious. Um, yeah, it, it, just just an honor to be a part of it. To 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 have worked on all the records we have worked on together, but to be asked to become to be asked to come back for this one specifically was uh, touching for me. So you know, I just I, I try to I try to put the thought and effort into everything I do, but I. I really really took that one seriously and uh we we all worked with will putney that was the first time we all worked with will and my my first time working with will period um at that point and that kind of segued into working with him for uh you're welcome so yeah uh, in a way i guess uh, the ghost inside is is why last chance to dance exists maybe so crazy crazy time what did you what did you learn from Will Putney? Because you're a producer in your own right, you work with loads of bands, but I can tell from both this chat and when I saw you in catering at Aftershock and how stoked you were that you just worked with Will, that that you, you really vibed with him. What what was the what was it about wanting to work with him and what did you get out of the experience? Um Will's just got an amazing ear and vision for heavy music. Um, and just just seeing those gears turn and and to to be in the room and be a part of what he thinks makes something heavy or what what he thinks gets a riff to a point where it makes the album. Um, I, I think his his bar for for heavy music is amazing and just being able to watch him work with those guys and all of us put together parts and and songs it, it was really cool it, it was one of the most unique experiences i've had when it comes to making heavy music and he's uh he's a riff lord so it, it was it was <laughs> it was it was awesome just to see him and andrew just trading guitars you know like Fuck here yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna riff for a little bit uh and then andrew's gonna riff for a little bit and we're just gonna combine to make these amazing uh songs it was just cool it was cool to be a part of cool to see and um yeah i, I love his taste when it comes to heavy music so definitely want to be working with well again in the future love that what what does it take to get a band you to work with a band because you work with bands in your own right and I like i i've noticed that that's slowed up a bit in recent years what does it, it take? Has. What does it take to get a band to, to work with you in 2021? Well, well, to be fair, um, it slowed down because your welcome was the main thing I was working on, and just that. Anytime I'm in album mode, it's just nothing but that. Like, I have right. a hard time bouncing between. Some things squeeze in every now and then, but it's, it's hard for me to to cut that cord. It's also very hard for me to just be working with people when I'm putting together stuff from my own uh, records. So uh, you, if you're working with me, don't show me anything that uh, you might potentially not want me to commandeer. Uh, so I, I tell people to steer clear. If I'm in album <laughs> mode, you can't, you can't come to me with, Hey, this is this idea and expect yeah. me not. If I, if it triggers that thing in me that, you know, I'm, looking for you're gonna have to hand that up <laughs> this is uh this is now gonna be a thing so i don't know I, I when when i'm in album mode i'm in album mode and then i open up the doors for other people after that um so that i'm, I'm gonna start doing more stuff like that now oh um, right when when i can 
Yeah. So I've actually already started a little bit. So hopefully we'll we'll see some new material coming out with other bands soon. Um, but what it takes in 2021 is the same thing it took forever. Nobody really understood this, but I so far, you know, since the day to remember pays the bills, um, I'm in this very, I would say, fortunate position where I can take on projects that I know that I can help, that I know that I can be a great assistance to, or things that I'm very inspired by. Um, just like I was saying with the Ghost Inside, I take I take having that role as producer serious. Um, I don't just accept something for money. Um, I haven't yet. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, everybody has a price, I guess. But yeah, uh, I've never, I've never done that. It's always been like me reaching out to some guys like when I worked with neck deep, you know, I hit up, I met uh, Phil and I was like, Hey, I heard you're gonna have a meeting with Andrew about possibly doing your record. And I, I love your band. I would love to be a part of that meeting. I mean, you didn't ask me to be part of your record, but I'd love to pitch you for why I think I could help. Uh, and he's like, yeah, of course. So uh, we met up with Phil and it, it's just, it's just cool. I, I love being a part of things like that because when, when I, when I'm passionate about something or when I know that this band is going to trigger that thing that I was mm -hmm. talking about um, in me that just gets those gears turning. Um, yeah. Don't, don't take the meeting with me if I'm pursuing you because I'm going to convince you. <laughs> is there, a, is, there a quantifi is there a quantifiable thing, Jeremy, that, that, that floats your boat because when you do this wildlife and you do the devil wears Prada and you do like, there's like a lot of different things and bands that you've done shit with over the years. And I, I particularly loved a couple of years ago. I said something about Joyce Manor and I saw your like go on, oh, on Twitter and melodies, I recognize love melodies. I, I love Joyce Manor. That's been one of my uh, favorite newer bands of the last like five, 10 years. Um, our record store here in Orlando was playing them randomly when I was in the store. I was like, who is this? Me, me and my wife both. We were like, hey, let's Shazam this. This is yeah. great. We love this album. Bought the record. And uh, yeah, amazing band. Also very kind, very kind. You never know, you never know because the data remembers out there musically, you know, like yeah. mixed genres. Uh, some people think that's cool. Other people are like, this is not my thing. So you never know how uh, an artist you consider serious is going to respond mm. publicly. Sometimes people can be, you know, turning their nose up a little bit. So you never know. You don't want to, I don't like to put myself out there that much because I don't want to have any music ruined for me for just why you know yeah just, I'll, I'll keep to myself and just be a fan but um i remember writing those guys or responding about something about something they put out and they were very kind to me always and i just I, it was so so cool to me because i'm a big fan i like i wanted i wanted to get your take on so my passion is always in new music right it's always in new oh, yeah. bands and helping new artists and things like that and over the course of the last five years, it's my take that I don't think that any genre has had a worse last five years than pop punk. It's not been it's not been great, I don't think. Like I love the genre, I'll always rep for the genre, and I'm always looking. But as far mm -hmm. as bands emerging, things that have excited me, like I think the genre's had a hard time of it. I want to get your take on that as a statement. Okay, well, I don't know how long it's been because my life is legitimately flashing before my eyes. Um, you know, somebody told me we've been a band like 18 years or something the other day. I was just like, I'm not even going to process that. Um, <laughs> I hadn't you know, considered like, that myself. That's mind blowing. I literally said to them, uh, whatever, do the math, whatever 2003 is. And he said, I think that's 18 years. It's like, whoa. Stop. Anyways, next. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm usually tunnel vision and I have no idea when this band emerged when it comes to a number. It's been a while ago. It's definitely not in the last five, I would say, but mm. 
me personally, with how much of an effect the story so far had on me yeah. as a listener, that band resonated with me deeply. Um, so to have something, you know, I, I consider myself an adult now, you know, yeah. uh, to have a band come out of nowhere in that genre and to affect me as an adult like they did and to have the replayability that those albums have for me. Mm. Like, I was talking to my wife about it. It's like, dude, this story so far is going to be like oldies to our, our daughters. You know mm. what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. going to be playing these and they're going to grow up with these songs. It's like, and like, it's so weird that those guys would never know. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to be oldies to my child. Like, <laughs> you know I mean? like yeah. It's so weird to think about. But um, yeah, like that band was, was big for me. Um, can't wait to see what they do next. Um, Especially with that last record being left of center as well, I feel like like the the bands that I love the story so far as well, and the bands that I gravitate towards, and this is going to be a big thing when we start talking. Your welcome are the bands that throw caution to the wind. That last, the thing that I liked the most about the last story so far record was songs that sounded like a West Coast oasis. I was like, yeah. how how have you done this? Like, uh, I feel this vibe, and it's not what I expected. But I love it. But they're just doing something, you know, like they're doing something different. They're trying to they're trying to take it in a, a direction that feels them, but also feels different. Um, you got to do that, you know, whether it's, you know, way down the line or whether it's, you know, like an album after the one that hits for you. You know what I mean? Like whatever is right for you, whatever, whatever gets you making new music that you're proud of, that you're that you're ready to present to the world with gusto. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. it's like, you gotta, you gotta understand, man. Like those guys, those guys wrote an album that just completely flipped the genre. Mm, you know totally. what I mean? And, totally. um, you know, I, I, and I, I know what that would feel like from what happened with us in homesick, you know, it's yeah. like you do, you do something that, that makes waves of people, um, want to do that you know what i mean and they were very much the next band to me um that has done that um in that world how did you respond when it was you because like I, i've been around loads of bands that have been in that position and some of them are like it's cool how can you not see what is left in your way can go we influence that and then there's others that are like motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> so the sneaky ones the ones that are like you can you're a little too close like yeah that riff is literally ours i hear you yeah but then again like who knows man like god knows people have accused me of stuff like that and it's just like yeah at the same time it's like i don't know i, I don't know how other people make music i've definitely walked into rooms uh with people writing and been like damn you're just gonna pull that track up and, <laughs> and just like <laughs> and, and actually just try to redo that like Wow. Yeah. Um, I didn't know people did that, but I guess this is what people talk about on the internet, what Wild. they mean. I've never been a part of something like that. I've seen people doing it. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, who knows? I don't know. How I don't is, even know how I got on that subject. No, me neither. How was how, like, <laughs> so, so the last thing I want to ask you before we get to all things you're welcome is when I talk about pop punk having a hard time of it. No warp tour now. No like, warp tour, yeah. So how big a deal was Warp to you in terms of a date or a member's progress? Because I'm, I'm in the UK, right? I saw the bar fly with Maylene and the Sons of Disaster uh, and the yeah. Devil Wears Prada just growing, growing, growing until we, we were at Wembley Arena all of a sudden. Um, what, it's a cool story. Uh, what, it's not bad, is it? What, what, not a bad story. But what effect? Is no warp tour gonna have on the American landscape? I don't know. I mean, warp tour was definitely the thing for us as kids, you know, like that was just where you went to go see music um, that we listened to um, in like a festival setting. And I guess in a, in a setting that I was allowed to go to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that was very much part of us growing up. We didn't really have much else, you know, especially we lived we could drive like an hour and a half to orlando to watch bands at house of blues but other than that that was it you know and that was like a 2400 cap venue that's about all we had growing up so warp tour was like the big event you know so 
Um, I don't know that it's, the, it's definitely not the same, but you know, there are still things happening in the rock world that are very impressive. That Sonic Temple festival, yeah, um, the Denny Wimmer festivals, like that's crushing, man. It's like people sick. say rock's dead, bro. Go to a fucking Denny Wimmer festival and tell me that. I don't want to hear it, man. For like, real. Stood and, there were 60,000 people in Florida, Chicago. I've been all over. You're right. It, so it's happening. Like there are there are things happening. That one right there is the big one right now. Um, and it's growing. I think it's growing every year. And he's doing a fantastic job with it. Um, and he's doing a great job of mixing the old guard with us younger bands. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So he, he, he really seems like he gets um, the old and the new draw. And I think that's important. And a, and a lot of festivals did it, you know, and um, I don't even know the Warp Tour did it, you know, like you didn't really have a lot of the, the older bands as time went on. It was mm -hmm. more so just like the new up and comers. And it was meant to be like a smaller kind of festival for younger people. That is more like uh, download. And that was the same yeah. thing we were trying to do with self-help, you know what I mean, in uh, California. So to have a festival that treated artists right um, on the back end and also, you know, hopefully brought in older bands and brought in newer talent. So uh, he's doing a great job of it. Mate, that is a spectacular segue into where I want to go with your welcome. Because I had a chat with Alex Gaskoff um it was it's on oh, record cool. it's, yeah. it's on record so when he said it i thought of you instantly uh, i've been dying yeah. to ask you this question since i was talking to gaskarth as they had do it for baltimore out and the baltimore ravens were winning the super bowl and they couldn't get their song anywhere right when you talk wow. about mckinnon uh, when you talk about um danny wimmer and bridging that gap and doing the right thing and getting bands like a day to remember in there and in the mix as part of that has it been hard getting a day to remember beyond our niche bubble because it feels like anyone that exists within our world has heard the day to remember come across the day to yeah. remember and made up their mind on a day to remember therefore a day to remember has reached a big size a really big size but how do you get like bands used to and i wondered on so gascarf had a lot to say about it and i wanted to hear what you got to say about it okay I, I haven't seen what he said about it so this is cool i like two different takes like this um so you just heard my take on it so i i did remember has always been a band that stands out so this, this answer is going to be very tailored to us. Mm. Um, and I think we're one of the only bands who can do this or who have done this. I mean, this in this specific way, when it comes to touring, we're very unique in the sense that we can be direct support to Slipknot, um, which I hope happens again. That would have been awesome. Uh, that was going to be my first time playing Madison Square Garden and also oh. the Orlando Arena. Uh, I am way, which is our hometown arena where the magic play. And I love basketball. That was going to be a big deal for me. Man. So, uh, so not, let's get that back together sometime. Uh, but anyways, we we're, we're, we were unique always in, in the fact that we could go on a tour with like Slipknot and then we can go and be direct support to Blink-182. Mm. Um, and both fans would look at us and be like, damn, do you hear that? And if, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because it's like when we're on a Blink show, most people would be like, well, don't play the heavy stuff. Then Neil, and it's always Neil, to be honest, I, I'm the guy. Should we tailor the set list a little bit more to this crowd? And Neil says, no, let's play what we play because we're going to stand out. We're not going to sound like everybody else on this bill. We're going to yeah. be the band that comes out and everybody's going to put what they're doing down. And they're going to be like, whoa, what is this? Oh, I do like that song but that's a little different. And, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So we're the band, you know, you know what I mean? Like a dog, when you do something like that gets their attention and they're like, you got the head tilt, <laughs> you know, you got their attention when the head tilt. I do, I know the exact one, mate. A data member does that on every show because we're not the same band that's on the bill for these mm. bands all the time. We're either put on the not tour. It was going to be like, we're a pop punk band with heavy parts and for these older fans, that is not something that they come across. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 
we still have those moments. Um, we're just very fortunate that we 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 chose to mix those genres because that's always that's always made us stand out. We're never the band that gets ignored on the show. Um, so we're very fortunate just because of who we are. And that's always been a big part of why we've grown and why we pulled from all sorts of different genres. And when we put out new material, we're yeah. always making someone mad because someone likes us for the breakdown in highway and somebody else likes us for the chorus of downfall or the acoustic song. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. So someone's always angry with a day to remember. So we're not, we're not, not used to that. Um, and your welcome was very much us trying to, trying to do that next wave of that. It's like, okay, so we've got the song that, you know, is a full on metal song that you love from our mm. catalog. You know it, you know exactly, you, you picture one and it's unique to you, which is another cool thing in my opinion about our band. Um, it's unique to each individual fan what the metal song is that they like, what the pop punk song is they like, which acoustic song they like, because there's multiple. Some yeah. people swear by, um, I'm already gone. You know what I mean? And that's slowly grown over the years, which is crazy to see. Um, so Your Welcome was very much like, okay, so we've got the acoustic song. We've got the pop punk hit. We've got a metal song that people like. What if we had a song that was more like a chilled, like, beachy vibe or like what if we do like a pop punk grungy type song like violent so with Viva La mexico you know what i mean so it was it was about taking a day to remember into a new point in your life or a new thing that you could do with us like you can go listen to this song and your grandma's not gonna be like turn that shit off like what the fuck is this you listen to this kind of music you know what i mean yeah. like it was about getting a song or two in the catalog that people um, that new crowds could be a fan of and then reel them in. And then as they go through the catalog, there's going to be songs that naturally progress. So it's like, you'll have, you, you like everything we need. You're going to love it. It means a lot to you. Yeah. And it gets to be like a big rock band at the end. And then there's, you can slowly lean them into, maybe it's complicated. Maybe they, they like, better off this way and there's a breakdown in that verse and they're like oh i don't usually like screaming songs but now i kind of like this verse and then now they're interested in other screaming songs so people call us a gateway band and, and that's how it happens for us mm. so I'll, I'll let you know uh if your welcome works three years from now right uh so I, i'm where i'm working on that answer still you, um so we'll see do we'll you try think it. do you think people know a day to remember like um, it's been it's been a year right and it's been a year for people having things to say and we'll get to shutting up the internet when your album goes in at number three we'll get to that but the biggest thing that i took away from it was i was like i don't feel like the internet knows these people because people see a band as an entity as a thing but that thing is made up of a couple of individuals that are all at different points in their life and all have different influences and you're a band that are 18 years in so the yeah. broad question is do you feel like the audience at large not just your fans do you feel like the audience at large get a day to remember i don't know uh, that, that's a good question um it's hard. The audience at large. Okay, so you mean like fans of ours? Anyone that likes rock and metal, Jeremy. Anyone who could potentially oh. like your band or anyone like your band. Well, it's just so tough, Bees, because it's like we are a... I don't know. Combining genres isn't for everybody. You, you know what I mean? It never has do, been. Yeah. Uh, when, we, when we originally were talking about doing it, I've said this in a million interviews, but everybody was like, you can't do that. No one's going to take that serious. And some people still don't. Mm -hmm. um, and you still see that. You still see that in every record we put out. You know, it's like, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. It's like, uh, maybe it doesn't. I don't fucking know. Like, but it has worked along the way, obviously, because I'm, yeah. I'm here still. Um, people are still coming to these shows. Um, and the plays on these songs keep coming in. So... It looks like there people are living with them and they've mattered to a lot of people over mm. the years. And uh, that hasn't stopped for us, thankfully. So I don't know. I, I don't I don't know that 
everybody gets this, but it's like, I don't know that we're meant for everybody to get. If that makes sense. Like yeah. we're not a straightforward, we're not a straightforward band. We don't, not fit everyone in one genre. likes faith. Not everyone likes faith no more, you know? <laughs> exactly. I don't, I don't know if we're, you're meant to get it all the way. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, we're just writing what we want to write when we want to write it. Um, influenced by whatever we want to be influenced by. And um, being a fucking artist, Jeremy. Being authentic. Yes. So I've seen, I've seen that word used multiple times in all of this that is like the crucial thing for me personally as a writer that i'm trying to do it's like i don't i don't want to write a song that i'm not feeling i don't want to have to check boxes every time i put a record together and um uh, that's why you know since homesick we haven't had a breakdown in every song because that is that would be so easy yeah. Do you know how easy it would be to just slap the bridge breakdown in every song or second verse or the outro and yep. call it a day? Like, that would be so easy for us to do. Um, but it's like, I'm not always feeling that. I'm not always feeling that every day of my life. I Some days, like, I'm not super sad. Some days I'm really happy. And I would love to have songs that work in our catalog um, that are different, that feel different. And this goes back to what I talked to you about a little bit ago that also fit in different days in people's lives. And I'm already seeing that. I'm already seeing people hit me up online about like, they're working their jobs, like blasting fuck you money. Yeah. And I'm just telling you, I got goosebumps just thinking about yeah. that. Because that's the vibe. True story, man. That's, that's the vibe of the song. It's not meant to be deep. It's meant to just take you out of that moment. Like, man, I'm having a rough day, but you know what? better days are coming my friend and and that's the vibe it, you don't have to be it's, it's not meant to be like some serious song it's meant to be like fun it's supposed to get yeah. you out of that funk of, of feeling like crap and just give me something to look forward to like hopefully one day man i know you mentioned basketball are you an mma fan jeremy i am i am right. uh, you know so, i'm i'm more casual these days but right i used to be full on i got obsessed with I thought it was the coolest thing ever was Chris Weidman used to come out to I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So sick. I'm and a massive Tom Petty fan. Like the, the stars and stripes and the song and the whole thing I thought was such a wicked combo. And then I heard, fuck you money, Mr. McKinnon. And I thought yeah. to myself, that's the vibe. That's the vibe. It's, the it's, vibe. The, it's, it's more than just, I said it earlier, some songs you hear and some songs you feel. Is that, yeah. is that something that's underrated in songwriters? Because when you say, I love hearing how real people are affected, it's not about fitting Spotify's algorithm or doing 500 million plays or whatever. It's about affecting real people in real ways. Yeah, that's an interesting take. Can you say that again? What did you just call that? Uh, uh, about well, the music? Uh, as, as some people hear music and some people feel it. Some people hear it and some people feel it. Yeah, I, re I really love that take. And you're so, so right. There's so many people I talk to that like don't even know what the lyrics are to one of our songs until like years later. You know what I mean? People be like, oh, I didn't know you said that. Like, what? <laughs> like, I, you didn't know that I said that? You didn't know this song was about that? So you're right. Some people, some people just want to have background music. And I got to tell you, man, like there's... There's nothing that aggravates me more than how popular music gets dogged on publicly for being superficial or meaningless. I got to tell you, how about this? I, this, is, this is just me speaking for myself. It would be very easy for me to write something that's meant to be poetic, that I'm using big words. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do something that's very much up for interpretation and you can take it in all these different ways. Like I like stuff like that. Yeah. But me as a writer, I have always loved the simplicity of pop music and how you can say so much by saying so little by saying things that are very common that have deep meanings. If you're looking for them that have multiple meanings sometimes if you're looking for them. And I love stuff like that. I love saying something simple at just, you know, five years from now when somebody tells them, no, it means this. And then they're like, 
<laughs> that's it. what Love that's it. what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I've always been trying to do. And as as time has gone by, I've I've really tried to focus on getting better at that. Um, and it's up it's up to the listener to decide if I have or not. Yeah. Um, but man, the point I'm trying to make is how about this? This is going to be controversial. Um, great example for me personally, mm. Katy Perry's um, Last Friday Night. Right. The lyrics to that song are some of my favorite. How about that? And that is probably, there, there are so many metal fans that would hear me say that and be like, the fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but, and, and I get it. But dude, like the way they land on the words, they're, I don't know. And the feeling is universal. Like, yes, it's a universal feeling. You know, those words in that amazing melody that you can't forget, it's unforgettable. Yeah. The words are so well put together and slap when they hit. You know what yeah, I mean? Mate. Like, Spot the, pro- on. The, pro- the pronunciation of the word is a hook and you don't even realize it. The words themselves are extremely memorable and suck you in to a moment that you can vividly picture in your mind. That's different for everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's almost like a book. You know what yeah. I mean? Like Hogwarts looked a lot different to me than it did to you before you saw it on film. <laughs> Hell yeah. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Totally. I do. Yeah. So there's something that I love about the simplicity of a pop song. Um, and I'm always trying to get better at that. So uh, I don't know, like it really frustrates me that people just write off music like that. Cause it's like, it's, how about this? It's hard. It's For real? hard. I, how For about real? this? How many times, you, how many times have you heard the, the, the comment, man, I could, I could write something like this in like 20 minutes, brother. Yeah. Right. I'm sending you a contract, my friend, <laughs> yeah, right really. now. That's... I am investing in you. Let me tell you what. It's 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 not easy to write something memorable that has substance that affects people with very little. Yeah. With a with a standard chug power cord. It's true. It's true. Show me. And show it's... me the money. <laughs> you know, like show but, me. Mate, I've had that chat with I've had that chat with Chad Kroger. Right? If there was, if it was I've, fucking, if it was easy to do, there'd be a fucking million nickelbacks and there wouldn't be loads of like, forgive my honesty here, but like octane bands that sound like really, really bad nickelbacks. Bingo. Right? And, and everybody wants to act like what he did is so easy or like lame, but it's, it, it's actually like, it's really fucking just because you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. It's really fucking hard yeah. to, to write something memorable that means something that affects people. That is very simple. The fact that it's simple is a cage. Do you not understand yeah, that? Great. Like you can't get too crazy because then like you're alienating a lot of people. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's 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 a lot harder than you think. Do you think it alienates people when they hear things that they are suspicious of? So I know a lot of people had a lot to say about the Imagine Dragons-y style backing vocals that are on your welcome. And I can understand yeah. why, because Sh- you're not the only band to do that sort of thing. Shine Down do it as well. There's a lot of that feel on songs. Do you, yeah. think, do you think there's a, there's a line or what, like, what's your take on that? Take on what? On if people are kind of put off the second they hear like what the whoa, 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 one hundred percent the sound the sound on that. One. Could you understand if people are like, I don't know about one, that. One hundred percent, you are correct mm. that it, it doesn't matter what happens for the rest of the song because their mind is made up. And gotcha. I could say anything or sing anything; it doesn't matter. The mind gotcha. is made up. For a lot of people, you're right. Um, but you know that's normal for us. Um, we've we have that reaction every album. We we all we have songs that people um, really have a personal connection to. 
to do with winter. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, like you find you find this band and more often than not, it's the record they're on or the next record where you actually get to experience the anticipation that you attach to. You get it. You love it. If you love it, um, that's the record for you. And mm-hmm. for some people, that's for those who have heart. For some people, that's homesick. Um, for more and more people, as time goes by, it's common courtesy, which mm-hmm. is which is a great one for that to be happening with because I was actually just told, by the way, that that record went gold and we're Fuck waiting yeah. for it to... Fuck yes, yeah. Jeremy. Congratulations, mate. Thoroughly thank you, deserved. thank you. Thank you, thank you. But we would have just... I'm just telling you, like we had almost an equally um, negative response to all of those records when we put them out. And it's yeah, because remember, people... Yeah. Yeah, people people attach to older things because that's when they found you and they don't want to lose that. You know what I mean? And they don't realize it, but it's like I can never replace the first time you heard pop punk and breakdowns. Yeah. I can't I can't make you feel that again because it exists. Yep. It exists now. You've heard it done a million different ways. You're never gonna be able to experience that feeling of this is the newest, freshest thing ever unless we do something different that makes you feel that way. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to write a record that's authentically us today without leaving what we were behind. And, and accomplished, mate. And in my opinion, we did a really great job of that. Uh, I agree. And I think, I think time will tell what works and what doesn't work. So, so we'll see. We're no, we are no, strangers to people being yeah. upset when records come out though well what i think like means that every fucking body has to respect the day to remember and i mean fucking everybody has to respect well you the don't day have remember. to no you do when i open my trap and i point my finger right you do have to and i think that is because you have the bollocks to write a genreless record like you said earlier like you could tick boxes. There are a million bands out there that are on all, like bands that reach your stage, bands that are like, we've got our greatest hits set list is fucking down. We can play for an hour and a half and everyone in here knows every word to every song. With those bands, a lot of them get on autopilot and are trying to almost fit their own algorithm and it's two new songs from the record where everyone goes for a piss and all the hits you know. And a date to remember are not that band. And We don't are... want to be that band. There you go. We're trying, we're trying not to be that band. And, you know, uh, my take on it was to, like we've said, just to, to have a date to remember in a different moment. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like... Uh, we've just the perspective has changed a little bit on this record and you know a lot of the songs are way more happy or have a a brighter outlook or feel brighter you know what i mean in the production and the song um and you know what i mean like you're you're not gonna play mr highway at like your buddy's house that doesn't listen to metal music yeah you know what i mean but you could toss on everything we need if they like you know rock you know what I mean? Or you yeah. could talk if they like hip hop, you could toss on looks like hell and they'd probably be like, Hey, that's, that's kind of cool. You know what I yes. mean? That's what we were trying to do. We, we get, we were trying to have those songs that feel new, that are still heavy, that feel like the data member formula, but also take those steps in the different territory and hopefully bring in people that like different music because that's what we've always done. That's, that's why a data member, um, has done as well as we have is because we pull from all these different genres. So we just put hooks into different ones and we're trying to reel them in. So. And is that, is that, the, is that the way moving forward? Because it feels like... Um, it feels like limitless. When the next A Day to Remember record comes, right? I, I feel like you're welcome throws every, every perception that you have of A Day to Remember out the window. When there's a next record coming at this point in time, you know, after you're welcome and it goes in so many different genres and directions, I would have literally no idea where a day to remember goes next. And and I love the record. And that's the ultimate thing that I want from my bands is to trust them implicitly and not know where they're going to go. How the how how? strong do you feel that trust is in a day to remember 
Uh-oh. Oh, it, it cut off at uh, yeah. how strong is the trust? Hey, yeah, how strong do you feel the trust is between audience and band? Do you feel trusted after this record? Uh, once again, it's going to... Time is going to have to Just tell on that one um, because there there is some songs on the record that are different and um, we'll, we'll see how it goes when we get out there and we play shows again, um, which thankfully it looks like may happen. Come on. Um, I already got my first stick. Yes, when, uh, mate. Come on. Let's my, go. Getting my second one here at the end of the month. Cannot wait. Um, let's get back to work, everybody. Indeed. Um, so um I'll, I'll let you know when it when it happens i mean there's so many songs there's more songs on this record in our top 10 on spotify than any record we've ever put out in our lives um so i at this point it sold like over a hundred thousand around the world um looks good I don't, was the, was the I don't launch know. was the launch weird though jez your record was I mean, coming. Your your record was coming on. out. I didn't even know it was coming out. Le was le it? Le legit, legit. Like someone said to me the day to record, remember record was out on Friday, and I said to them on the phone on a conference call as well. I went bullshit, and they were like, I "No, it's out on Friday." And I like, I fucking adore your band. What was what was it like? And do you feel like that affected the narrative of the record? Uh, I think it affected the narrative just because it was delayed so long. You yeah, know what man. I mean? Um, just think, just think how different everything would have felt had the record actually come out the date that we plastered all over Reading and Leeds. Yeah, you man. know what I mean? I do. Resentment had just come out. Everybody was vibing it. The there's. There were tons of videos of people being like, this is fucking sick online. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it seemed like one of the most unanimously loved things we put out in a long time. And then if, you know, the next thing you heard um, was or saw was this amazing video for Bloodsucker right after that with an amazing visual, everyone would have felt a lot different. Yeah. It wouldn't have, it, it wouldn't have, I got to tell you, I think the visual on, the resentment video did a great job of selling the heaviness of the song, the yeah. darkness of the song. And I think that really went a long way um, for people to accept it. And I think once again, with uh, Bloodsucker, it would have been the same thing because it is a heavy song. Mm. Uh, you say, you say um, Imagine Dragons, and I can see how people can make that comparison, but that's a heavy song. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a heavy real. song for a band like that somebody's all i also saw this it might have been you i don't remember who it was but somebody was like if this was an imagine dragon song people would be like damn that's kind of heavy yeah <laughs> you know yeah that, that wasn't like, me that, that wasn't me that said it but whoever said it i back them yeah it's spot on but i mean wouldn't it be cool to have a heavy band in that world to have exactly a, a heavy that, band have Jeremy. a song on that radio station wouldn't that be great to have us represented in that form yeah i just what? don't understand I really don't. They... You don't have to like something, but but we've always been a genre uh, fluid band. Uh, so I just I don't understand the confusion, honestly. Why was that world ignoring you in the first place? When when it's like guitars, I, 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 my yeah, exactly that. Because my fucking yes, Jeremy, yes, guitars. I'm so glad to hear you say it. Because that's my thing, right? And the thing that I said when it came to Imagine Dragons was nobody, and I mean nobody, can convince me that A Day to Remember wouldn't be as big as Imagine Dragons if they were given the same push, if they were given the same push into the mainstream. That's my words, not yours, mate. Like, so I'm not putting right. words in your mouth. But that's my take. And when you say it's guitars, I agree. Because I've... I've if it's fucking, just a yeah. fact. I'm That's just it. telling you the last the last song that got pushed at, at radio for real in America for um, us um, was all I want. And every time we went back uh, to radio, we always got met with the same thing, which was nobody's really playing music with guitars in it right now, man. Sorry. Like we like the song, but this doesn't fit with our playlist right now so we can't we can't diverge too much because you know other things are happening and we're not going to play uh essentially guitars um yeah. so 
you know, that transitions into modern stuff. That's why I'm personally super excited about like this hip hop, pop punk thing that's happening. You and me both, yep. Because Anything it's guitars on the radio. Anything that's a gateway, right. And it's like, I love hip hop. I, yep. I am, I'm a massive hip hop head and I follow everything. Probably it's, it's probably my most listened to genre, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think I, I think that's the same for almost everybody in our band. Uh, Kevin wouldn't have said that before he joined us, but now he's like forced <laughs> to listen to it. And now he likes it. He's ripping um, country leads on your records and listening to hip hop. Shout out, Kev. He is. He's uh, we've definitely influenced him a little bit over time. Like he, Love he it. didn't. He would have never put that on, but he had a lot of friends in Orlando that listened to mainstream hip hop. And then we're always playing a little bit more underground stuff pre-show. That's like what we play to get hyped for shows is hip hop. Love it. So like, I'm a, I'm excited, man. I think it's so cool that, you know, guitars are something that's kind of working now again. Yeah. So I think it's nothing but good news for everybody. Does it, does it fuck with your head as a songwriter when they tell you that about guitars? Like there's been moments. I hope you could. I hope. Uh, I hope you appreciate my honesty on this one. But like, I, I hear "Best of Me" on Common Courtesy, and I go, I understand. I hear the. So I love the song with Marshmallow. I love it, right? Because if they're not gonna fucking, if they are not gonna put guitars on the radio, let's put in a date to remember song into Marshmallow, right? I, I, I see it. I get it. I understand. That guy's got how many million monthly listeners? Oh, dude. If that's he, a way, if that's a way to get a date to remember music to people, let's do it. When when that song was about to come out, I was checking all the time on Spotify. He was like the number seven. He was like floating between like top five and like top 10 biggest artists in the world when that was Wild. about to come out. And it was just blowing my mind. Yeah, man. Super, super cool guy. Like still hits me up today just to talk music. I uh, love that dude. Fuck yes. Um, but the, but the, the thing I ask is, does it fuck with your head as a songwriter? When they tell you, hey, cool, we don't do guitars anymore. And you're like, we've done this whole new thing with this genre that you've played for years. I watched Sum 41 on MTV. I watched New Found Glory on MTV. I watched Green Day, The Offspring, Rancid. And you're telling me when I get to the door, you're closing the door. Does that fuck with your head? I mean, it definitely is not something that we were happy about when okay. it was happening. Um, man, you bring it up best of me. You had to bring up best of me, man. I love that song. Yeah. Like, that was one of my favorites. Still is to this day. Like, when I go back to that record, like, that's one of the main ones I revisit. Like, Sounds to me, that like always US felt... rock radio, though. You hear what I mean? To me, it was like my take on the Foo Fighters or something. You know gotcha. what I mean? But gotcha. like, But, like, a day to remember. Gotcha. Um, you know, I think Foo Fighters is a pretty good target. Uh, I mean, great, yeah. Great rock band. Um, yeah, like, it, it was always something that we were bummed about, that we wouldn't get the support that we wanted. Um, but, you know, it, it hasn't... It hasn't deterred us you know like we like we just said like we just heard that record um sold enough to go gold here in the states so Hell yeah. it 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 happened anyway without it yes. you know what i mean so um it was it is a bummer to to be told no like that just because you're playing a guitar um but you know yeah. everything we put out still has guitars amen so. and you stuck to it and that's that so how long did you work on your welcome? Because it, it was uh, the question that I'm going to lead on to, I might as well tell you, is every time yeah. any band has got new material out, they can't wait to tell me, yeah, but the new stuff. And you wrote this material ages ago. So where are we at? Yes. What, what have you been doing for the last year, Jeremy McKinnon, songwriter extraordinaire? Let's see. The first thing I have in my Dropbox here is three years. Wow. Three years. So uh, that's, that's how long it took. Um, a year was definitely added because of this whole pandemic, which slowed us down to a screeching halt, mm -hmm. um, as, especially with how collaborative this record was um, in every sense of the word. Even when it came down to mixers, we had we had like five mixers or something like that on this record. 
just as like a new approach, like send send the song that feels like something Tom Lord Algae would crush to Tom Lord Algae. Like, you know what I mean? Like that was the approach, but you know, when when that when COVID happens and you can't go in a room and just bang it out in a day or two and walk out with a finished product and then every little change is a separate email up to interpretation by the other human being Ugh. that then shows it to you. Yeah. Not quite right. No, like this. I meant this way. Do it again. Maybe it's still not right. You can yeah. imagine like it just snowballed into some crazy long project. Um, the artwork was the same. We had something like, I don't even know the goddamn number. I got to get an updated number because in the middle of it, I asked for um, a file with all of the cover attempts. And it was stunning. It was like, oh, it was over 50 covers. <laughs> if, if you can imagine that. Mate, sell them as NFTs and make you buy a house, buy a million houses. How does that work since we didn't technically make them? Well, yeah, they are. They, <laughs> like, hey, hey, I'll let you whatever. figure that out behind the scenes. <laughs> okay, true. Good, good thing for me to figure out. I'll work on that. <laughs> so... As we get to the end of this chat, have you been working on new stuff? Is it going to be production for a bit? What's next for you from a musical standpoint? Uh, same answer as always. We're always working on new material. Um, we never stop. It's, it's just like sometimes we're completely doing nothing but that. And then other times it's like when we're inspired and, uh, there's definitely been some inspired stuff that I'm that I'm very excited about. There was even a song that like I did my damnedest to finish in time to make your welcome, and it just didn't make it at the very end. Man, I can't <laughs> wait. Honestly, I don't know Love when in, when anything like that's gonna happen, but um, there's there's material. And how much did everyone else play a part on this one? Because there are, I think, more than any other A Day to Remember record, uh, and you can take this to the bank, I think you can hear the personalities of multiple people from A Day to Remember per song, per part of the record. Like, it really, really, really feels like everyone has had a, 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 a real big fingerprint in the making of this record. That's awesome. So we did it similar to how we've done every album except for bad vibes which was purposely made um like we used to write when we were a local band um just not have any material go into a room and write and whatever happens happens i'm i'm more my comfort zone is to uh compile things that i'm excited about for uh years and it, it really does take me about two to three years to to have a full record's worth of life experience that i'm happy with you know um i really feel like that's the sweet spot you know for me because you know uh, it, it really depends on what you're going through in life for me like when it comes to subject matters um being genuinely inspired to to have something to say um those big life events that i i put into music take time so uh takes a bit sometimes i don't know what to tell people uh, my my way of making music is a lot different from the others uh but other guys in the band you know neil went out and did some sessions with people and brought a bunch of of musical ideas alex wrote a bunch of stuff for the first time um one of his songs is almost done um that he's awesome. always that he's always talking to me about that i think old school data member fans are going to love whenever we finish that one day. It's just like, it is so ADTR from like 2013 to 2010. Yeah. Um, so old ADTR. I can't wait till we finish that one. So it, you know, people wrote on their own. We brought it all together. Um, did a bunch of sessions with people that inspired us. And then we just picked our favorites. And that's, mm. uh, that's really how it worked. Um, we were originally, we had so many songs, we were originally going to try to do a double album, but it was just too much, man. Like, there were so many songs. As we, um, the label was like, guys, let's let's try to keep it focused and concise. 
um, you know, quality over quantity, essentially. Um, there's like, there's like three songs that feel like mind reader, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, let's, we all think mind reader is the one. So mind reader is the one, um, that was tough for us to swallow. Cause you know, you want to put out everything that you like. Um, but I think it was the right move and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I've seen people giving them flack for that decision, but it was the right decision. And the reason it was the right decision is because it would have taken double the time it did of actual tracking to finish all of that because mm -hmm. we we didn't even agree to record less than like 22 23 songs and then as we put months and months of work into this record it was it was very obvious it's like some of these songs are are solving their problems naturally um as we go along and then others kind of feel like i don't know how the fuck we're gonna solve that one <laughs> so it's like naturally songs started to weed themselves out um and I'm, I'm very much of the mindset i call it um no riff left behind uh, i'm not, i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna completely ruin a song with bullshit that i think is uninspired just to finish a song to make yeah. it make an album i'm gonna wait and i'm gonna wait until what i do over the top of that song or vice versa is good enough to be on an A Day to Remember record. Because there's a bar for me. Um, and if it doesn't reach that bar, we'll see We'll see how we feel next time we start putting music together. And uh, songs like uh, Lauderdale. That's how Lauderdale came together. Lauderdale was written for Homesick. Uh, the chorus um, absolutely was fucked up because Chad sang, I've got big balls, let me hand them to you over the top of it. <laughs> In the most, in the most catchy melody you've ever heard in your life, that I could never get out of my head, and it was like I can't rewrite the lyrics. I don't know. I don't know how to rewrite these lyrics. Like this is just a song about balls. Song. It is then. Exactly. So it's like, well, I can't finish this song now. But because of that, yeah, um, I had I had the chorus uh, for Lauderdale come to me later on, and then it made it's now one of our biggest songs, and it was on what separates me from you. So. That's how we treat songs that we love. I, I love I love when you say, I need enough life experience to go into songs because it makes a song like Everything We Need means so much more. When the last couple yeah. of years have been you starting to raise a family and things like that, like that song, again, just takes on a life of its own because it goes back to what we said at the very beginning of the chat. Authenticity is everything. Um, it is, man. I uh, thank you so much for your time, Jez. I just want to say one thing before you go. Um, yeah. A bunch of years ago, I, I, I keep myself to myself. I'm a private man with a public life. But um, I, I was having a bit of a crisis of confidence a couple of years ago. And um, you dedicated, if it means a lot to you, to me at Download. And yeah. I know it's just an off-the-cuff thing. But that kept me going for months when I was in a really bad place. It always made me believe that there was more and it was worth not giving up on. And the, the thought of guitars getting stopped at the door and all the rest of it was getting to me at that point in time. And I just want yeah. you to know that that means a lot to me and your friendship means a lot to me, Jez. So it means thanks a lot for to everything us too, over buddy. the years, man. Thank you for everything as well. So. And, and yeah, guitar, those lads guitars are, are coming back fucking better believe it and i hope it's you that breaks the doors down because you deserve it brother catch you Let's soon go. man later bud cheers mate bye jeremy See mckinnon ya. of a day to remember always a pleasure to have the man the myth the legend jeremy mckinnon from a day to remember so hi every new person that's been here Stu, thank you so so much for your comment oh shit Oh my God. All right, sorry, I've only just seen that. Thank you so much, Anonymous, and everyone that subbed and followed during that. So just so you know, uh, I'm going to start recording right now a show called Why I Love A Day To Remember. It's a radio show, and it starts like this. So stick around with me. I'm going to do my radio links in between. If you look, my, mo my moderator, Gaza, has given you a link to on Spotify. I record radio shows right here. This radio show right here is going to be all about a day to remember, giving praise to their music. So, thank you.
Thank you, Anonymous, for that.